is it Filipino or Japanese or Chinese? Tell me. I have chocolate, one cracker stick with the dip, and then I have a strawberry one, and I also have. I also have coffee, guys.
she could give me a command she told me um, to push the, um, the brake pedal so I pushed and then she told me to turn on the um, the blinkers the right blinker and I did my god
have to stop completely stop and then afterwards like after a few seconds I carefully uh, drove like creeping out of the line and looking on my left right you know you have to look for pedestrians left right left that's what I did look for pedestrians look first on the left to see if there's a car going you know oncoming traffic they always have the right of way so and then I crept out no one on the left no pedestrian on the right and then I looked on the left again and you have to like really swing your face very obviously that you are turning your head and then I crept out and then straight and then another stop sign and this is the stop sign I missed the night before with Michael and my guess it Michael punished me for that so instead of just driving 15 or 30 minutes I drove one more hour after that <laughs> so I didn't I I did the right thing I stopped and after I stopped a few seconds after I stopped another car came so that means I stopped first and it's a four stop sign road that means whoever stops first has the right of way so it was me before so I could read straight and then she said okay uh, just straight and then to the right so I drove straight and then to the right to the right you will see safe way you know true value and yeah stories like that so I did the same way same thing stopped completely and then drove and creeped out just to be sure because the cars would be driving 45 um, 45 what do you call it miles per hour sorry guys it's men of brain fuck brain fuck so while I was driving 25 miles because it was a residency so I have to be careful and really look creep out slowly and I believe there was no cars so I went to the right did the blinkers thing did the left right left and then you go straight and then you have to go to the left turning left lane you have to wait for the yellow line to stop and then you can go to the turning lane you have to go inside the turning lane to your blinkers of course I did my blinkers and then the blinkers are still on and I had to wait if there was an oncoming traffic I don't remember if there was an oncoming traffic but if there was an oncoming traffic I had to wait for that and then I turned left and then uh, and then she just told me go right turn she was very soft-spoken she said okay you will drive just straight and then you turn right okay that's how she was okay she wasn't whispering but she said you go straight and then you turn right okay that's how she talked like the whole time very soft spoken and then and then i did what she she wanted me to do and in one of the streets she said oh park on this street there's a curb it it had um residence homes residential homes so she told me, okay, park here. So I parked on the streets. And then she told me, oh my God, Michael and I practice this going backwards, driving backwards when you're on a curb, when you are parked. So I did it really, really slow because when you back out and you don't, and you're not allowed to use it any mirror you're not allowed to use any back backing up a camera my god so you need to do it slow you need to um, look over your shoulder and then 
and look at the car if it's swinging to the right swinging to the left it should like just back out straight and if you do it slow you'll see the change of the car if it moves to the right or left and it wasn't like it was just a few feet and it didn't move it was just straight because it was a short and then she said okay it's okay and then we went straight and then she did and then we went out to the highway and then she told me go then we went to other streets you know turn right turn left and of course I did the blinkers every time but there was one tricky thing at first when we did when we sat in the car she told me the rules that she won't trick me she won't make me do anything illegal but there was one tricky command so we were just um, I was just driving straight and she told me after the street lights when it's green I turned to the right but the thing is it was a four lane street it was a highway so before you can turn right and I was on the left lane she didn't tell me go first to the right lane and then turn to the right because I should know that luckily Michael has been teaching me so well that I knew I first had to go to the right lane before I turned to the right and I was thinking, you won't get me that way. <laughs> and so I did the blinkers. I was like a professional, you know, driver. I was so proud of me and Michael. So I did the blinkers to the right. And I, before I could turn to the right, I looked over my shoulder. I looked on the side mirrors. I looked on the rear rare view mirror and then the shoulder again I did everything I don't know how many times to see that there were no cars coming and it was tricky that day uh, a little bit more traffic than usual, usual guys so I saw a car coming in front so I had to wait you know I had to slow down and then I looked again no more and then I could go to the right and then uh, to the right lane and then um, when it was green I finally went to the intersection and yeah turned to the right and I felt so proud and I thought my god if I missed that that's another major mistake so we went to residential homes again and she just said oh right left right left and I believe yeah, everything took 20 minutes, guys. I believe um, it was time to go back to the DMV. Uh, we were on the highway, I believe, three times. And she just said, turn right, turn left, turn right, turn left. Um, I was following the speed limit. That's very important. Not too fast, not too slow. Just the exact limit. And then we were about to go to TMV and I was thinking, did I pause or not? So I guess I was overthinking in the end that I forgot because she said, she told me, I believe I did the blinkers going to TMV, but when I was to, to, to choose an aisle, I forgot to do the blinkers. And then we, uh, and then I parked, and I wanted to uh, close the windows, but I think I was so nervous. So, oh, she said, "Oh, shouldn't we close the windows?" And I tried it then because I was so nervous, and I said, "Oh, it's okay." <laughs> she already told me before that. She already told me I passed, and then she said, "I did, I did like this." like that and she shook my hand I was so I was like just hoping for 76% that's the passing I promise you guys I promise you know me I tell you when I'm good but 
you know, it, it, it's my obsession to to be to have this skill. But since it's not my passion, I was very afraid I wouldn't be able to pass. So I couldn't believe it. And ninety eight percent. Oh my god. Um, and then I said, oh, "It's okay." So she went to the DMV, and I couldn't even lock the car at first. And oh my god! But finally, in the end, I could lock it yeah, because our key is a thing you click on. It's not, um, you know, the old-fashioned one, but it's the click on. So I finally was able to lock it, but I I think I was too happy that I forgot how to turn, uh, how to put pull it up the windows. I went in, I told Micah, and, and Micah said, so it's open, the windows are open, but you lock the car, then someone can come in, but they can't start it without the key. Anyways, but then he was so happy, he said, he knew I would pass as soon as I went out the parking lot and he saw the, the, the bus. <laughs> he was so happy, guys. And he said uh, he would feel that it was a failure if he didn't pass because he's my teacher. I still call him my teacher because he's still teaching me. He's so good at uh, driving, guys. Very good. Very, very good. And yeah, as I said, it's for Maria, so it, this might help her how it was for me. I was very nervous. I was, I drank two mugs of coffee and then um, 2,000 micrograms of B12. And you know, just to calm my nerves, vitamin B12 and coffee. And then a good breakfast. I was so nervous, but when the driving test started, I was still nervous, but I was more aware, more concentrated. I didn't feel my heart pumping. I was excited, more nervous than excited. And then I got my license. Uh, it's still paper now, but. I think in one week more, I will have my plastic one, my permanent one, and it's valid for four years, I think. I would tell you guys that I have, I have dreamt once, a night dream, that I was driving and I was so happy in the dream. Then when I woke up, I really realized, yeah, I don't have a license, I don't know how to drive. Um, after this dream, I was able to drive a truck, so I knew before Michael taught me, I knew that I could do it, but you know, it's still not the same, although my teacher told me since I was able to do the truck, the car would just be a piece, cake, piece of cake, but it wasn't a piece of cake for me guys because I'm not sure if it's a phobia or I had extreme fear of driving because I respect driving I know it can be so dangerous it's not only up to you you know there are so many stupid drivers uh, so many road rage out in traffic so it's not just up to you but if you are very good in avoiding dangers I ha I am very good in avoiding dangers guys I'm not saying I'm the best driver but I'm one of the safest because I listen to my gut I um, I'm good at detecting dangers before it happens and even Michael told me that is very impressed when it comes to that but even though I have that uh, every time we would drive my god I would be so afraid like afraid I would hit it, even animals pets and my god god forbid another person oh my god another car even when I'm only in 
as a passenger, I'm afraid. Uh, my mom is like that. She experienced some accidents, so... But you know, when you grow up hearing that, I guess you get the fear or phobia. So, for the... For the four months I was practicing with Michael, I was afraid it didn't... It didn't really remove it. At first, guys, I would tell you, I was hyperventilating when we were from um, the other house, the city house, going to this river house. I was hyperventilating, like I was crying, no tears, but I was like, you know, getting almost like a mental breakdown. And um, Michael would tell me, wait, do you need to stop? Sometimes we had to stop. And he had to take over what I experienced was when I was uh, drinking coffee. You know, it gives you adrenaline, adrenaline rush. I wasn't afraid. But coffee is not so good for me. It gives me so much heartburn because I don't have a gallbladder. I'm quite sensitive. So, uh, if I was just taking B12, especially if it's just 1,000 micrograms, my god, I would be hyperventilating, doing like this, <laughs> like the hot, like, and then wanting to cry and doing like, <laughs> like the hot, and saying, oh my god, oh my god, not on normal streets, even though it, that could be dangerous too, but on highway, especially, it's okay, like, straight, but as soon as I will be turning, and especially if the, the, the speed is 50, oh my god, I, that would scare me, if it's just 25, no, so the speed, and if I'm not seeing <coughs> where we are, like, you know, when you turn and you only see a mountain, you don't see the street, oh my god, that would freak me out, and it took at least two months before I got rid of the hyperventilating, my god. And if it was right after work, my, 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 uh, I did experience one hyperventilating like a month before my test. And I was just, I wasn't tired, I wasn't anything, but... I think uh, in those months since my menopause, not really menopause, but my perimenopause started last year, I think I have, I was having anxiety because of the menopause uh, panic attacks, because menopause would make you feel that you're having anxiety, although there's nothing really, you know, and nothing really that made you upset. And of course, when you're learning to drive, and if you're already afraid, plus the menopause attacks, I now understand, oh my god, I'm so, I'm so thankful for Michael for, uh, you know, not giving up. And now I understand, guys, why I was having those panic attacks, like, I, in my head, I was thinking, wait a minute, I've already done this before, why, like, I, when I would be taking the coffee, guys, and I was turning, I didn't care, I was even driving 50, 60, doing the turn, so, I can't blame everything on the perimenopause, but, if I was tired, and nothing was really making me anxious, then yeah, I blame it. <laughs> it's good. Um, that's why, guys, you need to go to the doctor, or you need to analyze your health when you're getting panic attacks or anxiety. Even though nothing happened, nothing special happened, you have to think, like, am I experiencing something? Is this PMS? Am I pregnant? Is this menopause or perimenopause? Am I deficient in any vitamin? You know, things like that. But uh, that's... Uh, and I will tell you guys, 
if you have phobia or panic attacks or anxiety and you start driving uh, as, like I knew how to drive before that because of the truck but here because of the perimenopause it made me like feel I wasn't in my body like I was just pretending that I was just you know faking it so when I was driving at first in the beginning it was like I was outside my body seeing my body drive because um, that was the only way for me to handle the stress it was so stressful and I'm not saying you will experience this because you're almost all of you are young so although some 30 year olds would experience perimenopause already but for me it felt like I wasn't the one driving that I had to split myself in order to do it split yourself or just fake it until you make it you know I did everything I forced myself um, it's really because uh, Michael wanted me to have a driver's license and also f you know so I would be independent but I did it for him so that if he would be sick or someone else in the household would be sick and no one else can drive but me so for emergency like you know I can't always think oh Maria will drive me later if Michael and I can't, I can't always think that way. I should be one of the people they can rely on. So that's how I did. Even though I was having phobia and panic attacks, anxiety, you name it, guys. Um, luckily, Michael is a very good instructor. I told Maria when she gets her license because she would only be getting 30 hours with a school when she gets her Filipino driver's license I told her when she comes here she will be with us for 3 months I told her Michael will teach her because if you have um, your country's driver's license you're allowed to drive in another country for 3 months as a tourist so Michael will teach her the American rules here and teach her, you know, it's not the same roads, the windy roads, the highways, it's not the same. And each country has their own, there would be road signs that are the same, street signs, road signs, uh, rules, but you know, so I can't wait for Marie to, to have Michael as her second driver's uh, teacher um, I can taught her how to shoot a gun and uh, Maria thought that yeah Michael is a very good teacher and he is guys he's very patient so yeah I was one of the weird people um, I guess that's a normal reaction when you are in a stressful situation or your personality is easily stressed, easily gets anxiety when you have to do something you really just fake it until you make it and I think Michael was just thinking oh she's just nervous but my god if he could dive into my brain he would not let me sit and drive <laughs> like I was freaking out guys when I was driving like thinking oh no oh no what if that driver co comes and does and some Oregonian drivers are like stupid they would not use blinkers or if it if they use the right blinker they would go to the left and vice versa or they would drive too fast but mostly too slow and if they think you would pass them they would suddenly drive fast and you know and then if you drive faster than them and then when you're behind them then they would 
drive slow again Michael call them passive aggressive drivers or that's what you call them so um, but now that I know it is perimenopause now I understand it makes me hopeful guys and last week when I was driving you know for the first time after my license I wasn't nervous at all I wasn't even drinking coffee guys I um, I felt powerful empowered I was very careful I saw all the stop signs I wasn't missing anything I guess it made me feel legit so my self confidence went up and now I know when if I ever get a panic attack or anxiety then it's just mostly physical you know like a hot flash that would come so I wouldn't beat, um, beat myself up I wouldn't you know uh, but no matter what you feel guys you have to just forget it or at least when you're driving to just do your best, be safe, just uh, expect that people will drive foolishly and if you are like me when I was having panic attacks too much, hyperventilating, hyperventilating too much, then Michael would stop me, then we would park or if I was like about to cry, like the, the tears to go down I told him, babe, I need to stop. So we would go to a turnout park and then he would take over. You have to put a limit on yourself whether or not you're a student driver or a new driver. You have to put a stop on it before something dangerous happens. Uh, like traffic and driving is a serious business. It can be between life and death. So don't be too proud. Don't be conceited. Just stop and then do it again the next day. Accept that you have your limits. Accept that you can have, you can be nervous. You can second guess yourself. Cry afterwards when you after you parked and changed you know when you're in a passenger seat cry all you want or park and cry and then just go with the flow feel every emotion but the next day you drive again that's how you will get your driver's license like emotionally physically it's easier it's emotional or the mental, you know, thinking that you can't do it in time. I gave myself four months because I wanted to have my license before my birthday. And Michael also wanted it. He didn't believe it at first. He said, no, are you really ready by then? That would only be like four months. But when I was on my fourth month, then he believed it. And he didn't want, I wanted to postpone it, guys, because of the uh, no back camera, no back up, uh, what do you call it? No camera when you back to the reverse, when you back away, back away, back up. Not forward, backing, backing. It was, I only had two weeks before we could practice without the camera, my God. So I told him, feel ready but we were practicing like um, almost every day and then in the middle of in the second month then we would do it every uh, other day and then you know every third day but for the last two weeks I was uh, driving almost every day yeah and practicing the backing and then we also went to or a city house to drive on the street so I would be familiar because uh, the test would be there so 
you should know where the test would be and you should drive there so you're not, you know, surprised where you are especially if you're aspy or insecure and stuff especially if you're not in love or obsessed about driving you have to do this you have to um, acknowledge your weaknesses, guys um, even though really, if you're good at something and you practice it more you get better but if you're not good at something and you practice it in the end you just become you know decently good uh, unless you get obsessed by it and then you can be better I tell you guys I will tell you guys Michael felt frustrated with me because I had difficulty in backing and Maria was with us I couldn't understand my god <laughs> like there's a difference with parking on a parking lot and parking uh, just from a street. It's different. So when you are in a parking lot, you have to have your steering wheel straight, okay? You put the, the gear on reverse. So you have your steering wheel and then you look over your shoulder you have to back out straight first so you have the line the parking line and then when you are at the end of the line you look on the, your mirrors you look on your back and then you have for example if you're going to the left you have to turn your steering wheel to the right all the way so when you back out your car would go like that to the to the left and then when you have done that then you put your gear on drive so it goes forward um, while if you are parked on a street you know by the curb then you have your steering wheel straight and you back out straight that's like that's the difference and then if you're going up a hill um, then you have to go like to the left or right but yeah you forward I when I was driving a truck uh, and I had a trailer the big trailer it was the same problem when you turn your wheel to the right, the trailer would go to the left. Oh, you know, it was hard for me, my God. Um, because it's not my passion, so it's just, it just became my obsession because it's a skill. And you, if you know me, guys, I love collecting new skills, new languages, and it, this one is a very good skill. It's like getting a medal, guys. And I have Michael to thank that for. And you wouldn't believe me, but Maria helped me to research. She would ask me questions. She would do well in the driving school. I know it. <laughs> I can bet my life on it. <laughs> now, I... Yeah, I could. Maria is very good in gadgets, in technology, in things like this. She'll ace it. <laughs> I mean, if I could ace it and I'm not even in love with it, oh my god. She would do, I think, 100%. I know it. Okay, guys, so this is a very long video. It's dedicated to Maria. I hope you like this video. Please tell me about your driving experience. If you have a phobia, a fear, tell me. How did you do it? What did you focus on? Tell me. If you like this video, guys, please give it a thumbs up. And please subscribe to this channel, Scorpio NYT. Please go to my husband's ASMR.